So this is Bad by Michael Jackson. I've also got Thriller as well. Um, but it was the Bad tour that Jennifer Batten played on. She talks about what it was like touring with Michael Jackson, what it was like rehearsing with Michael Jackson, um, how she actually got the gig. So um, there's a very famous guitar solo on the song Beat It, which is actually played by Eddie Van Halen. And she actually did it in an audition. It's about what a musician could learn working with Michael Jackson and you know there's no doubt about it, he's one of the most talented people that's ever lived both as a dancer as a producer songwriter and obviously as a singer as well yeah okay all right are you ready I'm rolling Chris can be in please <laughs> so if you were to sum up uh, the podcast and its uh, mission statement in one very punchy little phrase, what, what would you say? So the Stage Left podcast lifts the veil on the music industry by telling the stories of those with a unique vantage point. So the idea is that rather than focusing on the front man, we want to speak to the people who were in close proximity when the magic was being made. You rehearsed that, didn't you? <laughs> Um, well, I've been in the band for 15 years um, and done kind of various things in the music industry. Um, and where the podcast came in was 10 years in a row, my, my actually better half's father, he managed to get backstage passes to, to the V Festival, which when it was good. And we basically spent every weekend, uh, once a year, at this festival, meeting a lot of our heroes. You actually realised the best people to speak to and getting deep, deep conversations with um, were actually the people who come off stage who weren't centre stage. I ended up having these fantastic conversations and fantastic experiences, and that kind of planted the seed for the podcast without me kind of realising it. And it just kind of made me think, you know, these stories need to be told. Basically, I was noticing that a lot of kind of young people getting into music seem to chase their dreams by going through this route of kind of fast track to fame. And I just wanted to kind of um, make a podcast where people could realise they could achieve their dreams of playing Wembley Stadium, writing songs with some of the greats, um, without having to kind of appear on these kind of talent shows. So this is um, Fleetwood Mac's greatest hits. The best uh, Fleetwood Mac album, obviously. Um, and yeah, so uh, on the back of this record, there we have Billy Burnett. I mean, many, many people have this record. You flick it over to the other side, and there is a guy who's appeared on the podcast. Um, and you wouldn't know who he is necessarily, but you know he's, he's had a, an incredible career. And he gives a great insight as to what it was like being in Fleetwood Mac. So he was in their circle of, uh, of, of friends when they recorded Rumours. And as everybody knows, there was a lot of interpersonal relationships that were kind of in crisis points around the time that Rumours was made. He also toured as Bob Dylan's guitarist, um, as well as uh, like having quite a successful solo career as well. So he's, uh, he's kind of done it all. Yeah, um, it was a bit crazy for the first episode because I literally just got in touch with a guy called Mike Rowe, who was Noel Gallagher's keyboardist at the time, played in Oasis kind of for over about 15 year period. He replied saying, yeah, let's meet up for a coffee in Paris. So I did the interview, it went great. I put it on the internet thinking like a few of my mates will listen to it, maybe a few Oasis fans. And that's when three days after we launched it, um, Sheryl Crow heard the episode because she'd worked with Mike and actually um, uploaded it to her online community, um, which was 1.6 million people, um, which I hadn't planned for at all. And I was kind of like, oh wow, like things just got real now we had like a huge spike in listenership and it also allowed me to then pitch the podcast to other potential people and very soon we got Lawrence Juba who was um, Paul McCartney's guitarist in Wings. Um, he has won two Grammys, he's played with three of the Beatles and that was a great episode, that was episode two. Um, and it's kind of snowballed from there, once you get a couple of names involved it's easier to get other people. We've had an episode about Elvis, which was amazing, with Shane Keister, who was Elvis's pianist. The Tony Visconti episode was pretty crazy. Um, we had an interesting episode with Mike Farrell, who, as well as being Morrissey's keyboardist and working with Alanis Morissette closely, he also toured with David Bowie, um, Macy Gray. I also love the fact that you could be sat next to some of these people on the tube um, and you wouldn't have a clue who they are, though they have actually kind of achieved the dreams that most young musicians aspire to. They don't get asked this stuff very much. I think they can be more honest because um, they aren't, uh, they haven't kind of got the PR bullshit around them but they're kind of scared what they say ends up being misconstrued in the press. The best thing about this podcast is that we're, we're getting in-depth talks. You know, these aren't five minutes interviews. These are people willing to give up kind of 45 minutes to an hour of their time. Um, often kind of, there's been an oversight and they haven't been asked before. So there's a kind of willingness to talk about the music industry in great depth. I got, this in, uh, I got this in America a few years ago. It's uh, the Imagine album by John Lennon. 
um, and it's a gold disc. But what this is kind of cool, this is um, actually from John Lennon's front door. And you know, if the place was burning down, that'd be the first thing I'd be saving after the cat. <laughs> I don't have a cat. <laughs>